Hello, and welcome everybody out there in YouTube and D&D land. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Before we jump into the action, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All of those things help us out tremendously. If you're interested in supporting our community a little bit further, consider becoming a member here in our YouTube channel. Membership start at just two doll hairs a month, and you gain access to some really cool emotes. Lastly, if you are interested in joining any of our games, our Tuesday early has between two and three slots available right now. Be sure to reach out to me if you are interested in that one, and we'll try to get you situated and get you in some of the games and action and fun. Now, without further ado, Liara, tell us what happened last session. Last session on Abyss Divers, um, we decided that we were going to find the, well, one, City of Morian got sent through the Abyss, and it was sent through a ritual that required use three relics and a concentration spell. Using a monocle that can see the weave, we followed where the magic was being pulled from and manipulated and found it out in this desert where there was a Tarask that was corrupted by the Abyss out here and a settlement of people that had a divine protection spell keeping them afloat. We talked to the people at the settlement and found that they had a demon there that we ended up convincing them to let us talk to that told us what layer of the abyss we were on so we could use spells over fifth level and give us a little information on the archmage that's doing this spell it turned out it was zachariah toku who was essentially someone banished to the abyss back in the la the original zodiac campaign um he was trying to get revenge on uh the mori family so we end up finding out where he is which is like the city that is alive um we get to the city and one of the people in the city greets us and it turns out to be the tarasque itself in a weird form and it brings us to him thinking that we have uh riku with us who was actually vendir um <laughs> and when we get to the door to open it immediately the guy sees that riku is not riku is not with us and combat starts um, we end up fighting, and unfortunately, Vendir is eaten by the Tarask immediately, and then savagely beaten to death by Zachariah, but we manage to get in there and rip Zachariah out and kill him in the Tarask, not before he beat the shit out of Liara, but, uh, we, after we defeated him, we found that he dropped concentration on the spell, and instead of us having to go take down the shields on these relics the city just immediately went back to zodiac so our way out is kind of gone now um we managed to get a message from uh what's his face um god i can't think of his name desmond desmond sent us a message letting us know that uh that we we saved the city and that Vindir managed to make it outside of the city before it teleported, because once you die in the Abyss, you come back to life where you came into it, and you can only die like four or five times there. Um, but he didn't tell us how he got out, so that was very helpful on Desmond's part. Um, and now we're here, trying to figure out how to get out. <laughs> so, where last we left off, we'll start with you, Vindir. <clears throat> Vendir! Yes? You made it outside of Morian fast enough that the city's disappearance did not bring you back to the material realm. Within a moment, you instantly have to start debating if that is a good idea to have decided to stay here and help these people. Or if you would have been better off going back to the material realms and helping out there. Though, the guidance of your god does answer that question with post-haste. However, within the next moment, Vindir... Thanks for the reminder about the map, it's up. You remember something. When you died, you felt the connection to everything within this layer of the abyss. You felt... Every single one of those 
buildings within the fake Morian were independently conscious and abyssal in nature. Except for that one area that you did not feel a connection to, that strange location. You also recall your allies are smack dab in the middle of that city, surrounded by buildings that are presumably weaker than that church that you guys were fighting against, but not by a very large margin. Okay. And I don't recall how far of a... Uh, I guess a walk or a run is it from here to where they're at? Uh, you had to fly over a um, ocean of purpley goo. Okay, uh, that was a couple of hours, and then you had to travel across a uh, open sandy drift that just looked like putrid and nothing was attached to it. That was also about an hour. Okay. Um, Knowing then, the directions and everything, you could probably get that lowered down to two hours. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start making my way there. Um, and I'm also going to send a sending to... I'm trying to think. Um, before I died, who looked the healthiest? Casimir. Okay, then I'm going to send this to Casimir. Uh that Morian has gone back get out of the city everything is alive and head to where Morian was Okay. <clears throat> Casimir. As you are standing there, beginning to catch your breath from the fight and battle that just occurred, you receive that sending from Vindir. Um. I don't know where he went. Isn't he with us? Uh -oh. Vindir said that the city's city went back. Morian went back. Uh, oh. The city is a lie. Um, a lie. That we should <laughs> leave and go back to where Morian was. What we? Morian's gone. He said M Morian went back. Well, that's good. Um, it could have just mean like f like five feet backwards or something. I'm assuming he means Morian <laughs> is back on the material plane. Also, I don't think he said. Well, well, technically true. The city is a lie. I'm going to assume he means that the city is alive. So we should really make a mad dash for the ship. Well, we um, know that it was alive. This thing was hitting us. Well, it's dead now, but still. I, I think he means the, the rest of the buildings. I need you guys to give me a deck save as a bakery moves and begins to try to smash where all of you are standing. Hmm. Comedic timing. Yeah. Well, that's two of you. Okay, all three of you dodge out of the way as you do see the rest of the buildings are seemingly coming to aid their fallen comrades. Great. Let's get out of here. Um, just tell them to meet us where the ship was, because, I mean, we got to figure out a way out of here now. Also, I'm going to grab this guy's body. Do I see anything? Oh, remains... Uh, remains kind of, like, disintegrate and then decay and fade away. Was there anything that fell off, like magic items, or anything like that? No, all of the magic stays attuned to the individual who brought them with them. That's why Vindir still has all his shit. Okay, so everything's fading. 
great. Oh, that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cast fly on on everyone but me. So I had to use a six level spell slot for that. Okay. Let's just get moving, and I cast fly, and then I activate my winged boots, and then start flying up. Winged boots are ten minutes, correct? Uh, it's. Oh, let me re it's like, I have a total of like three hours worth of flying. It's just it has to be in like ten minute bursts, in minimum of ten minute bursts. Okay, we'll just say one of the three incredibly strong people with you right now are able to just carry you between those bursts. I, mean, I, I, I meant like uh, bursts is in like it has to be a minimum of, minimum of 10 minutes but I ha it has like 3 hours total of fly time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so the th four of you go blasting off into the sky and as you are doing so, I would like a perception check from each of you. That's terrifying. I forgot you're in the spider form. Crikey, mate. Let's go to Australia. That shit's common. That bear don't speak shit. Those are giant flying spider. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no. little bit distracting, okay? Good point. He does see that. <laughs> 24. Especially since I killed this thing. And 21. I'll, I'll give Liara Flash of Genius, so that goes to a 29. Didn't you use no. the last one of those last combat? No. Oh, damn. I, okay. could, I, I have six total... So actually, it's actually a 30 because my Flash of Genius is now plus 6 because I have 22 intelligence. 30. Is it the moon? It better be the fucking moon still broken. No, what you notice is um, that Abyssal Tarrasque seems to be like bulldozing its way towards where all of you were. Oh, I thought the building was the Tarrasque. Oh, yeah. No, that building was just one of the buildings. Yeah, we got to keep moving guys that's friggin tarask things coming i apologize if i undersold the uh drastic nature of this environment yes uh you know what would be a good idea let's fly towards that village with the protection i think we should fly to the ship yeah but i don't it might catch us i don't know i think we, we should fly to the ship are, are we faster than this thing or uh with fly speeds of 60 feet you are managing to stay slightly further ahead of it and with it up for an hour able to gain some substantial distance between yourselves and it no, to at least good. hopefully get bulkhead into the helm yeah, uh, te good. Uh, technically speaking fly is only 10 minutes everyone on the spider that can fly well, can you recast fly for the spider? Because the spider can easily carry all of y'all. Uh, if if that if it's, if that's the case, yeah, I, can, I can cast it a bunch more times. Okay, uh, it's going to take you with your fly speed an hour to get back to the ship. So I need to cast it five more times. Correct. So, but if you just cast it on the spider, that's only third levels, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. One, two, three, curl of power is four, and then two fours. That's six total. All right. Getting a good distance ahead, you all do notice as well that many of those um, still uncorrupted people seem to be lying in wait underneath your ship, and the moment a gargantuan spider is flying towards them in the air. They all begin screaming and running. No, it's us, friends! Roll me a persuasion roll, because despite you saying it like that, it sounds like, no, it's us, it's friends! friends. <laughs> Don't fail, Liara. A 15. Okay. 
Uh, some of them are still running, but a few of the more wise individuals notice the others with you. <laughs> Every, we we got to get on the ship now. Can somebody go out down there and get them? Has it been? It's been an hour. It's been a total of an hour. Yeah. Well, Liara would have been changed back into Liara at this point. Well, we'll say that that's happening right now as you guys get onto the ship. So, who's trying to gather up all the people to bring onto the ship? Uh, Bulkhead, of course, you're in charge of getting to the helm and getting the ship moving. I can Where am I at? I'll get them. Vindir, do you have a fly speed? Oh, um, yes, but no. Uh, air genasi bullshit. Can you fly for one hour? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. I can kind of levitate for a bunch of times. But that's a lot slower. Yes. Can you cast fly? No, he's a cleric. Yeah. What, 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 a wizard? <clears throat> Ugh, gross. I'm not a wizard and I can cast fly. Yeah, but you're practically a wizard. You're a wizard who uses tools. Yeah. But technically not a wizard. It's a wizard that uses wizards. tools use the wizard spell sheets just like a bard is just a wizard with good looks and a sorcerer is a wizard with good looks who has a tragic backstory I don't make the rules yeah so yeah other than levitate yes you do so other than levitate <laughs> <laughs> do you have any yeah, other ways of accomplishing this that's that's it. Unless okay. I'm just going to run my ass off. Which I do have a good athletic Well, you can't really though. run over an ocean. That's the whole no. problem. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, some people could. They said. If you were <laughs> a monk, sure. <laughs> no, uh, uh, well, I do have water walk. Do you want to try do doing have... that? I mean, I don't How slow is um it's like 30 feet, I think. Or 20 feet or some Actually, shit. It's like, I think it's like 20 feet. feet around, yeah. Yeah, 20 feet. And there's no dashing with it, it's just 20 feet. So they're all doing 120s. And the skyship, I believe, has a base movement of 80, right? Your skyship? Oh. Um, I, I don't know if you ever got stats for it. Uh, I, I have stats for it. Yeah, I gave it to the only person it mattered for. Uh, actually, it's only 35. Okay, but it can do dashes, so that's 70. Full steam ahead, that's dash. How far is the ship from where the building was that we fought? Over an ocean. Oh, from them, one hour away with their fly speeds. So it's only ha so it's, so it's an hour from me then, because I'm, I'm two hours away? Yeah, it's an hour for you, knowing how to get there now. It, guy, it took you guys two hours previously because you were trying to search yeah. around, trying to find okay. everything. Do all so I, I, can get there. I can get there the same time they do, pretty much. Yes, if you have enough spell slots to levitate for that long. Or is levitate no, I mean, an hour? Uh, levitate is like ten minutes. Um, but I can use water walk, and I can just run. Cause okay. It's going to be easy. It's going to be quicker to run than to use levitate i'll use levitate if i have to for some bullshit but okay otherwise i'm just gonna run so there's gonna be layers to this check the first one i need is an athletics all right let's see what the first dice roll today does come on okay that's not bad that's good <clears throat> the second one is a perception Been better, but so bad. you only get guidance on one of these. Uh, I'm not, I'm not guidancing anything right now. Oh yeah, you wouldn't be able to dash if you did that. So 30, yeah. 25. Um, and the third one is an acro is going to be an acrobatics. Yeah. Not very good at those. Gonna go ahead and use scribe advantage. Yeah. Twenty two. All right. I need you to roll me a d4 plus one. Four. You do have to use four spell slots of levitate as you are flying over or running over. 
as you are running over, you start to realize that inside of this ocean, there are some really terrifyingly large things that seem very interested in trying to scoop you up. Luckily, you notice them quick enough to levitate, get yourself as high into the fucking air as possible, and then go back and keep running. You have to do that only four times on your excursion over across the ocean. Now, everybody else, as you're getting the ship situated, you uh, you all see Vindir float up and perch onto the vessel. Hey, guys. What a jugal. Um, I went back to Morian. Why? <laughs> uh, I wasn't... Uh, I didn't have a choice. That's why I just... He died and went back to Morian while it was still in the Abyss. He can't be dead. He's right here. It's how the Abyss works. You die, you get corrupted, you go back to where you came here from. Oh, I'm just an undead ghost. Woo! Oh, he's a ghost. Let me punch him. <laughs> <laughs> While they're having this comedic uh, moment, uh, Bulkhead is going to grab the special sending stone, the infinite one that mm -hmm. Melion gave him, and he's going to contact her. Uh, the first message is going to be, Melion, can you hear me? We need your help. Um, I need you to roll a D100. You're looking for a 96 or higher, or 69. It doesn't seem capable of connecting. As Desmond did express, you can't really divine or communicate outside of the abyss. And since you weren't able to communicate with her, that means she's not currently in the abyss. And this isn't something I can just, like, brute force and keep trying? Uh, no, it would have to be... I mean, you can try at a later time, but you're literally just waiting to see if she goes to the abyss or not to be able to communicate. Okay. You cannot reach outside of the abyss. Oh, well. Yeah. Or at least this magical item couldn't do that. There might be ways and things and properties to uh, try to figure out how to breach through that that nobody's tried before, but you would need some time to contemplate that. But anyways... As you guys are getting all of the citizens from that lowly town that have been safeguarding themselves for an unknown amount of ages, uh, you go ahead and notice that uh, there's this magnificently large terrasse catching up pretty fucking quickly, running towards you all. Do we have everybody? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Not pretty much, okay. yes. You have everybody. <laughs> All right. You're not we're... leaving little Timmy behind because he was making a sandcastle. Uh, we're heading back to where Morian was. Okay. Then you guys start taking off into the ocean, or over the ocean, flying back over to that coastal landscape. Now, <clears throat> as you are flying back, Vindir, you notice the terrasse jumps into the ocean and then it starts transforming and adapting to be in the ocean oh that's creepy um I had to ask this question um how much information does Vendir know about um Taras in general um in general, roll me a history check. Twenty-four. Uh, for every world that you are familiar with, a Tarask awakening is supposed to be an apocalyptic type event. 
It is something that will destroy everything in its path, topple down all forms of civilization, uh, hunt down and completely decimate any building structure or anything that has magical residue within it itself. They're not good. They are seen as mindless, destructive entities. Um, however, this seems much more mindful, and given the information you all learned, it's probably because of uh, Zachariah. So it would be all right for me to deduce that this thing's probably going to chase us until something tells it to stop otherwise. Or if it can't. Um, guys, uh, that Tarask is, um, transforming or evolving to adapt to the water. I'm guessing it's growing fins or something. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? In, in the water, it's a bad thing. I, I, on the ground, it's probably a good thing. Do we need a distraction? I think if we just get on the damn ship and get the hell out of here, we'll be fine. But on the ship. I meant, you know, like... Get up higher, get out of, you know... You know, if a trash is like 100 feet tall, we're like, you know, 300 feet in the air. What if it can jump? Uh... I mean, while flying, Bulkhead is actively gaining altitude. Okay. Now, you do see very high into the sky, maybe a good five, six hundred feet or so. Um, there appears to be this just perpetual purple layer above you. Uh, now, probably close to a thousand feet, actually. Yeah. Uh, also, Bulkhead, I'm not sure if we ever picked it, but did we ever get your Abyssal Corruption? Um, I was gonna choose Dexterity. And what is the sign for that? How will people his, notice? His joints will start getting this like, black rust slash patina. Very cool. Yeah, but that hasn't happened yet, and hopefully won't happen. <laughs> well, you already did get your first Abyssal Corruption. We did? Yeah, you did. You were outside when the blast happened. Oh. Yeah, you had to leave that, like, at that moment, and you didn't make it to the next session for us to go over it. But yeah, that's all three of you guys got hit with it. Uh, if you would have died, that would have been a second one. But luckily, uh, none so of y'all died. No, I didn't realize that, so my dex is actually at a minus one. So, you guys begin sailing back over yonder to once you came from the area Morian was at. Now, the clerical leader is going to wander over towards you all, smiling. So, we are headed to safety now. How did your battle go? I died. My deepest condolences. Do we... You f yes? We killed a king? I think he was proclaiming himself a king. We killed a building. And then we left a lot of all our living buildings. And then we're getting chased. Right, I noticed the chasing bit. So what's this city of yours like? The, uh, the safe one? Oh, um, it, it, it's gone. Yeah, I was wondering that. Why are we heading this direction? What do you mean, Paul? Hoping, I'm hoping that there are clues left behind that we can figure out how to get out of here. Cool. Uh, so, we're not headed to a safe location any more? Technically, we are in a safe location because we are in the air. The Eldritch are not limited to just being on the ground or waters. 
Well, then, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're not going to a safe haven anymore. Do you want to go back to your church? Oh, it's too late for that now. I, I, we, we had to stop channeling our spell. It's, it's expired. Also, it Can you stop energy. channeling it here? No, the only reason that was working was because that was our home. And it came with the spell already in place. We just had to continually focus on it. And it would be fine. Well, for the, cur for the current foreseeable future, this is your home. So you better make quick work of it. It's not how the spell works. We can't reach our god. We're, we're all going to die. We're, we're all going to turn into those abominations. I'm going to smack him. Not like hard but like you know like yeah because you could kill it. him yeah, yeah exactly okay. <laughs> um you know i'm trying to keep the peace so you know sometimes you gotta use a little force so it's like a snap out of it come on you're their leader you can't be going crazy what hope is there now do you at least know of a uh, a new location a new place we can be safe we're working on it but I don't have to show you hope you should know you should have faith <sighs> he just starts muttering to himself and walking away slowly Casimir, by the way, since um, we have guests aboard, you should probably chain up your um, associate. She's chained up. Okay, good. I don't let her unchain. She can't be unchained right now. Yeah, have you checked just to make sure? Last I, I checked before we left the ship. I'll go check. You go downstairs and she's... Uh slamming her head against the bars trying to escape, but she can't. Uh, does she need a meal changed? Uh, her current bag is, uh, pretty spent. Alright, you come here. We'll get you swapped out. You can come rest. You did a good job. Who's a good cultist? <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> We should you know, probably... actually, I have a very special mission for you. You know, like, just come up here, like, we'll even let you see sunlight. Come upstairs with me. And I'm just gonna lead, after I, like, switch them over, I'm gonna lead this one upstairs. And I'm gonna take them to the deck's edge, and just point down to where the Trask is. So you see that... Yes. Unfortunately, you're going to be a mule for that. Be a good distraction, and push them off. Okay. The moment they scream and fall, everybody on top of the ship is freaking the fuck out. There's a good 30 people that are completely running around terrified right now that you just shoved a man off of your ship. Don't worry, he wanted this. It's okay. Roll me a deception check at disadvantage? Because he's literally um. screaming, No! Also, I would like to, when I see everybody freaking out, uh, use Tamadurgy and say, calm down. Alright, you can roll an intimidation. He was infected. Uh. <laughs> when oh. the body goes and reaches the waters... You see the Tarask is a ways back now. You're gaining a little bit of distance and height from him, but what's more disturbing is these long, like, octopus-like tentacles reaching up and swallowing the man into the abyss. Was that from the Tarask or from something else? No, something else. Do it and the Tarask start fighting. Uh, no, the Tarask completely ignores it and keeps chasing after you. Damn it, I was really hoping that might have done something to at least stall it for a little bit. Yeah. A moment goes by in Vindir, you hear below deck the shouting and screaming of that same man. It sounds just like him as he was falling. 
Oh, wait, uh, no. He, he was affixed to the ship, and the ship has its own temporal anchor to it. Yeah, he's on the ship. Um, Is he? Yeah. He's fixed to the ship. Your, That's his location. Yeah. Your cultist is back. Ding. I, I never thought this far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we set the precedence of what happens. <laughs> six intelligence. Yep. Okay. How's that 16 wisdom treat? Monster treating you? chasing. Beat monster. Monster stops. <laughs> that is logical thought. I can mean, I'm going to stop for a second to enjoy it. Alright. Uh, let me try again. <laughs> well, no, because doesn't that mean, like, if, if you keep doing it so much, then it just becomes something? Uh, yeah. We, that one can just get put in his own cage, it's fine. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, you guys fly back over to the other shoreline. Um, Bulkhead, I need you to do a dexterity-based flying vehicle check, please. This is to lose the terrestre to at least give you guys some amount of breathing room. Okay. Because you are definitely not faster than a terrestre that has adapted into the water. Damn, your dexterity is a negative one. Oh, yeah. Whew. Unfortunate. Um, I'll, bump, I'll bump it up with Flash of Genius to an 18. All right. You'll be able to time it so that you get back to where Morian was here um, and give everybody probably a good half an hour before the Tarask would be approaching. Good thing is the Tarask is super easy to notice when it's approaching. Using the uh, the monocle, can I look around? Look around where Morian was. See if there's any like lingering rift that we can fly through. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a investigation roll. Advantage because of the monocle. Yeah, give me guidance. Yeah. Get double guided. The other cleric will come over. Here, let me guidance you. <laughs> You're getting three gods. <laughs> wow. I rolled a oh. one and a two. Wow. Roll 20 oh, d20s. Get Just... all natural 20s this time. <laughs> Listen, if that happens, I'm suing roll 20. That is not... Mm. Eh, a little bit below average. Not a tremendous amount. Okay. <clears throat> so. On a 17 bulkhead. Yeah. On a 17, the only area that has this strange spatial difference is in the sky by quite a large... It. Um, and it reminds you of exactly where uh, inside of the castle everybody was when you guys felt the energy pulsate and pull you through to the abyss. When you point out the location, Vendir can confirm that's the exact spot that he came back when he died. So you can just sense that that is his magical rift. That is his attachment to this location. Okay, so that's just like the anchor point. Mm -hmm. Correct. Which leads me to wonder where I'm going to go if I die again. Right there. Okay, there's no lingering 
There's nothing else lingering besides the anchor point. So there's no, like, rift we can go through. Do we... What do we do? Should we just search the, search the area? See if there's anything that we can pick up? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is... When Morian left, is it like it never was here? Like, footprints are gone too? Or is there some shit left behind? So you noticed the imprint in the dirt of where the walls were when you were outside and then it disappeared. However, now that you've returned, the static airs of the abyss have moved and distorted things enough that there is no physical trace of that city ever being here. But if people want to investigate around, feel free. Yeah, I'll join in on that. Okay. Give me a cardinal direction. Watch your, which area of the city? Uh, north. Okay. Anybody else? We can say Liara will do south. And you roll for her, because why it's still AFK. Uh, I don't have... Uh, but uh, Kashmir does. Yep. Yeah, I've got her. Uh, I want to specifically focus on one of the... On whichever one of the areas closest to where those um, artifacts were channeling. Okay, so Maybe pick a cardinal there. direction. <laughs> okay. There were only three, though, weren't there? There was four. Oh, there were four. Yes. So we have north-south. I'll go east. Okay. Uh, that was Kazmir's old, but I will expand if you look after I add to it. I did not have uh, guidance for that one, but... Oh, no, that other cleric will follow you around to give you guidance. Oh, okay. But this time I rolled two 14s. Much better than a 1 and a 2. 30, 4, Casmir, and 15... We have one more direction. Um, I'll probably end up doing it. Um, but you said that when I came back, that I connected to pretty much everything. Yeah, um, you could sense and feel everything for a very brief moment. You're like hyper to... aware of everything, so yeah. yeah. Um, you said there was like a area that was different. Was that? in the Morian city area, or was that in the living buildings want to eat me city? Uh, in the buildings area. Okay. All right, then I will check uh, east then, or west, wherever one's left. I believe last is west, correct? You did east, uh, Bulkhead? Yeah, so west is the last one. Cool, go for it. Alrighty then. We'll start with the low roll first. Liara, who went south. Towards the southern end of this location. She kind of tries to find the, uh, the exact spot where that channeled point was. However, she's not finding it very easy to find anything any landmark whatsoever that can distinguish locations. It's an incredibly discombobulating type of uh, experience. It's like entering into excuse me, the Sahara Desert and then trying to find which way is north but without any clouds, sun, or moons, or stars. Venturing around that area there's not much that remains that she can find whatsoever. Uh, next low roll is Vindir, correct? On west? East? Uh, west. And yes. You're west. Okay. That is a 19. You discover 
the location of where that artifact was. Jesus Christ, I'm not even tired. The location of where that artifact was. There seems to be an indent on the ground. Uh, some type of ritualistic rune mark that you don't recognize, so you just copy it down on... I assume you have a piece of paper and parchment or something. Yeah. I have a priest tool bag, whatever the hell is in there. I know there's some paper or something. Perfect. Then you do it in there. You mark it down. And boop. Skid out of your way on out. Next lowest is Bulkhead with a 29. <clears throat> And you were east. Okay. You also discover the exact location of where that uh, that one artifact was located. Um, and what you notice is it has that very powerful rune, just the way that I described it uh, to Vendir. However, when you're looking at the rune, you're trying to figure out and piece together exactly what it is. Uh, since you given your state, are very familiar with magic and ritualistic crafts and everything assorted and generalized with that. What you can discern is this marker um, was supposed to be a sacrifice. So everything within the city was supposed to be sacrificed to something. There's not a whole lot more information outside of that you, that you discover. Casimir, however, you obtain the same information that I gave the previous two. The sacrifice bit, the rune mark. Except you have more in-depth knowledge of sacrificial magic. Being that you are, in fact, a vampire. And you kind of run and operate your own cult. You kind of pick up on a few things. Um, the city was meant to be a sacrifice to something eldritch and powerful. Knowing what you know and knowing that coincidence doesn't truly exist, you have to presume Axiom, which is a very smart thing to presume. However, whoever performed that ritual did not complete the ritual. The sacrifice of the city did not give the city over to Exium, since the city is now gone, presumably safe. That means it is an incomplete ritual spell to the most powerful entity in known existence. And you're not sure what the consequences of all of that is. But it also tells you, you and Bulkhead would be able to figure this out, that... These markers had to be placed down here before the city was sacrificed. Meaning whoever was coordinating this was coordinating and communicating somehow with individuals on the material plane from the abyss. Somebody had to be here to set up these runes and somebody had to be in the material realm to place them in the exact same spot with the artifacts. Gotcha. It's supposedly, you can't communicate outside of the abyss. Uh, he'll meet back up with the rest of the group, kind of just share his findings. After your half an hour of investigating, Bulkhead, you have to get everybody back on the fucking ship and you gotta be taken off again. That Tarazi is catching up. Back on the boat, back on the boat, back on the boat. Yeah, let's go. I, I think we should head back to the cities that should have things that we're trying to fight us. Any particular reason why? He's going to start heading that way, but he's like still just wondering why. Someone, from what I could see, the ruins were placed beforehand. Someone had to summon the city here. We have to assume that, that someone was likely the Zakra Toku member that we met. 
and if not, they might have had some connection with them. If there's going to be any clue of what might happen, it's probably in the building that we didn't get to check. So I think checking out that area, seeing what there might be, it seems like he was contacting something outside of this plane. And it's very possible that it's also... Selena? Selena? Solara? Solara. Solara. It's very possible it's her as well. She had that strange magic that would allow her to teleport to places that seemed, that seemed to let her do it without places that were, she should be able to do that in. If it's possible that she's came here and she's done this magic, or she was in cahoots with him or he did it, I think the only person we're going to know is in that house that we killed. Well, when I and right now, died, it's our only lead. Uh, we have another. Maybe I have another lead. Um, when I died, when I came back for fractions of a second, I felt like I was connected to nearly everything here. Um, and there was an area that was different uh, than the surrounding back in the city as well and um can I kind of like point in the car cardinal direction of where to go so Volcay could head that direction for the city well for the weird spot in the city oh absolutely I mean you're at this point you're just like yeah back towards the city but once you get closer you can you can pinpoint where that specifically was it was the only place within the city that you did not have a firm connection to Maybe that's another place we can check. Because um, that's different than the rest, and that doesn't seem right. I, I think that's our best bet. I don't see much else that we were getting from this spot, and it's not like we can stay here that the tonight is following us. Yeah. Although maybe we should just try to kill this thing and buy it some time. Because we need time to be able to investigate this place, to like check everything out, and we can't do that if we're just immediately going to have the true ask on us. If we kill it, we can always buy us some time until it comes back. Let's at least get to this, get nearer to the city. With luck, we, it it might like start trying to fight the city, and it will slow itself down. Maybe. It's probably not going to happen, but let's just get moving first. Maybe we can get lucky if we can lose it. You can certainly try again, Bulkhead. And you will be guided. Vehicle check, utilizing decks. It's literally like a stealth, you know? Uh, that shouldn't have had advantage, but it doesn't really matter. 20, uh, sorry, 16. Um, I'm going to use my last flash of genius to make that a 21. See okay. if I can actually just like, shake it off. You notice that when it moves from one environment to another, it seems to have to take a little bit of time to adapt. So you kind of play with it along the shoreline as you're trying to move until you can get perpendicular to where the city would be you know move into the water it has to adapt to the water keep flying move onto the shoreline it has to adapt onto the shoreline and you do this a reasonable amount of time until inevitably it is quite a far ways away from you uh you're probably going to have at least an hour maybe two hour breath from it staring down your necks And that's presuming that it will keep hunting you. If you would like to presume that it won't keep hunting you, feel free. Right, so we probably have max two hours ahead of it once we stop moving. So let's get to the city and see what we can find. All right. Well then, with all of you flying out and heading back to the city, that is trying to kill you all. We're going to take our break here. Be right back.
All right, y'all, go ahead and tell uh, White change your display name. Liara, what she missed. <laughs> Everything well. that we just told you, <laughs> that Sorry. happened. Uh, so we travelled over the ocean, we threw a guy into the ocean, it didn't go well, the guy ended up respawning back on the ship. Um, still screaming, unfortunately, but we've just separated him from now. Got to where Maureen used to be, um, on the abyss, because we managed to buy about half an hour uh, before the trash could catch up to us, we did a quick check. Um, Bulkhead looked around with the monocle, and the only thing that he could find was uh, the respawn anchor, uh, essentially, for those of us that were at the castle. That was the only noticeable thing using the uh, monocle. Then we kind of searched each, uh, each of the directions, found um, where the original spell casting stuff was going on, where the artifacts was. We found like runic markings there, um, that had seemingly been placed there before Maureen was ever there. So it was called to this specific location. But that also means that someone had to have been contacting outside of the abyss. And when Bulkhead tried to do it through his means, he didn't get contact with any anyone. So someone's been able to get in here or contact between the planes. We don't know who. Uh, Kazmir believes it's either Solara or Zachary Toku. So those are the best leads of who it could go. It's part of the reason why we're going back to the city. And then Vindir also said that when he um, when he was what's the word to use here? Because it's not like revived. Respawned. Yes, I guess it is just respawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before gaming, that was a real word. Yeah, like, so he respawned back at his stopping point. <laughs> the last and... checkpoint, if you will. Yep. He restarted back at the start of this level, um, where he last checkpointed, and said that he felt one place in this that he felt disconnected from. He could feel everything else, but there was just this one place that was back in the city that we're going to, where the Toku was, that felt entirely disconnected. So right now, we're going back to check, see if there was anything um, to do with that space that uh, Vindir felt. And also to check, see if there's any way, any clues that we've missed here, because we never actually really investigated it. And see if there's any way for us to contact people on the outside. And we've managed to buy at an absolute maximum two hours from the Tarrasque, but realistically probably only an hour. It's still chasing us. Uh, between one and two hours. That was the yeah. It yeah. knows exactly where we are Seems at all times. Seems to be tracking y'all. <sighs> only we had a spell that made things non-detectable. If only the party had a wizard. Or a ranger. Okay. Non detection is a ranger spell? Yeah, I get I cast it every day as uh Glacies. First spell she'd use. It's the best spell up there with uh Pass Around Trade. Ranger gets like the best spells and people do not realize it. Yeah, most DMs don't actually utilize that type of gameplay. Yeah, Bard Ranger Wizard, nice. Okay. Guys, I know there's a haze in the sky, but remember when we suggested blowing up the moon? Yes. Something's wrong with the moon. Like, I, 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 I don't know any other way to describe this, but something is calling me to go there. Like, okay. Well, let's... The priest raises his hand. Yes, generic priest. <laughs> I do have a name. Geronimo. That's my name. Ger Geronimo the generic <laughs> No, it's I'm not a generic priest. I'm actually quite an accomplished priest on my world. I was responsible for bringing people back from the brink of non-existence after death. Wait. 
non-existence. Well, yes, if you die for longer than a minute, you stop existing. Oh. Never mind. Keep in mind, that's a fucking very well-accomplished priest everywhere in the universe. <laughs> no, I, I thought... Well, it's alright, folks. Okay. Remember, they don't they don't understand anything past fav page five in my spellbook. <laughs> no one understands anything past page one in your spellbook. It's all nonsense. You look at the the jump spells in there, and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> um, but <clears throat> that moon, as you call it, it's no moon. That's a creature. Wait, what? What? So it is an egg. It's one of the more terrifying entities that seems to persist there. Um, a while ago when the mage who controlled the Tarask that's chasing us um, was coming through, um, he seemed to command one creature to go up into the sky and he decided that that's going to be his moon and that's what it is but it's you know a he commands these things that was going to be my question once you become attuned to the abyss you seem to become a part of it and he seems to have not become just a part of it but has made it a part of himself somehow that's not helpful in this case so thank you we're not um, going to the moon I was gonna suggest a giant monster fight remember we suggested that when it was Zodiac being flooded <sighs> but if both of them are under the same control not yeah it wouldn't work but we need to go investigate this place like, Why the can place he only that Vindir, control the big one? The, the place that Vindir could feel, and I think the building that we, you know, killed, is probably good ones to go and check out, because we never got the chance, because we just got told by someone to immediately leave. We're going to the Eldritch City? We have to, there's... Yes. You're going to stay aboard this. Oh, perfect. Yes, we are going to go, so don't worry. Yeah, we're fine, that's great. Just don't go below deck. Yes. Also, short did rest, we... Liara, if you want. Yeah, to. I was going to say, did we get a short rest? Yes, you did. Okay, um, I had 21 hit points, so that stays the same. 35. Let's drop this to 21. Um, let's roll 20d6. Is shit changed on, like, wild chip, where you're... Is no, because it's, it's... I don't think so. I don't think so. What was 31. the question? Is shape change like wild shape where you just get your hit points when you get out of it? Um, I don't think that's the case. No, it's you gain the hit points of the creature, and when those hit points hit zero, you revert back to yourself, and all extra damage carries over. So whatever damage oh, you so had, have my hit points. yeah, whatever damage you had on just Liara, you still have. But she didn't have any, so she's good. Wow, that, so that shape change is insane, because you can keep changing shape, so I could just be like, well, fuck it, this one's hurt. Let's yeah, something. well, it's also like a... That's why it's so ridiculous as a ninth level spell. It's so much better than true polymorph. Why doesn't anyone do that? No, I think the limitation of that is you can change forms, but your hit points don't change once you change forms. Oh shit, so once it... So okay. you're like, you can't be like, I'm at 20 health, I'm going to turn into something and gain another... 400 HP, it doesn't look like that. You would stay at that HP. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, that, that makes more sense, because, like, that would be fucking insane, just be like, well, I'm about to die, but it turned into a fucking thing of cancer. No, like, you're not a mandrid. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. Okay, let me get Lirast off the map. Delete. <laughs> Put Lyra back on. There she is. Okay, um, yeah, let's get there, I guess. I didn't have to short rest, so that's kind of nice. Yep, everybody gets to short rest. While you're flying, 
as you are flying out, you notice that the city seems to have shifted and moved from where it was previously. Vendir, you're the only person who picks up on this subtlety as you had that moment of clarity of connection and also your godly ability to notice things. It seems to have moved maybe half a mile in total. You said the whole city? The whole city. All right. Um, well, this city's moving. Well, it was living before. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, the whole thing, like, I don't know, a half mile, a mile off from where it was. Is in it... what direction? Did yeah, it... in what direction? Uh, towards the way that you guys are heading towards it, it's heading towards you. Coming also, it's coming to towards it. us as well. Yeah. I thought it would head towards wherever Zachariah comes back through. That would make more sense to me, but maybe it's just hunting us. Like everything else. I'm curious if it's hunting just one of us in particular. Like the one that killed it. Well, hear me out on this. I don't understand this control he has over demons. Because there was a demon in their basement that he had no control over. Well, the, these things aren't really demons, are they? They're all, yeah, they're all demons, I thought. I, I'm not Joey? Sure. What was the question? But these things aren't demons is what Kaz was asking. Oh, yes, they're all demons. It's the abyss. Everything in here is a demon. Demonic so influence, would... abyssal influence. Why well, would he just not control, control, control everything. certain ones? Well, yeah, but it might just not control everything. Like, not everyone in a vampire city is controlled by the one vampire kind of thing. Don't like, tell going to be, that. You're only going to take the useful ones. The ones under your control, you're not going to have everything. He didn't seem like the type that was willing not to have control of things. As it also could be that that could have been someone else's property. And you don't mess with other people's property unless you want to start wars with them. That was what I was actually thinking, that somebody else would have some sort of influence. And that's who we should be trying to find. Well, I think for now we need to search this place and be quick about it because we don't have long. Like, the Tarask is coming, but I think we have two places that we need to check out. Try to get any information that we can. And then get back on the ship, and then we can discuss after that next steps. If we don't find anything. Or what um, we do find. Because we're on a time guys, limit. Do you guys think we're going to be fighting anything soon? I was saying that maybe we kill the Tarask. To Great. buy us I'm, more time. I'm going to sacrifice 90 hit points to... uh Read the thing okay. again. What? I, I thought I could out. do it. I thought I could do it at any time. I do it in combat. It's just a waste of a turn. No, that's not the part of it. Uh, what's it called? Um, what's it called again? <laughs> For um, to regain a ninth level spell slot because the Ari doesn't have a ninth level spell slot right now. Yeah, she doesn't have one. What's the name of the item again? Uh, Doom's Chant. Thank you. Doom's Chant. While attuned to the earring, every time you cast a spell that consumes 1 through 5th, you regain hit points equal to the spell's level. Half of your caster level rounded up. Uh, in addition, you may use your action to pay 10 hit points to recharge a first level spell slot, 20 to do a second, or 30 to recharge a third spell, all the way up to 90 for a ninth. Okay, I thought I removed that one. Nope, yep, you can do that. Uh, so mark down that that is your once per day ninth recharge yep got it got my ninth back yep yep hold on since we did a long rest i think a short recovery, you did a short, short rest, rest. <laughs> short rest much different Arc uh, arcane recovery up to a fifth space. level spell slot i think yeah i think it's fifth you're right um yeah we'll just recharge our fifth and our first level that we lost
And then also remember that also the low is your HP max. Oh yeah, no, I, I just put her to 145. I don't want to like delete her HP max and then forget what it is. Yeah. Yeah, been there. Just keep in mind you can't be healed above that. Yeah, that's fine. Alrighty. So, flying towards the city, as you are over top of it, you do notice... Actually, roll me investigations, everybody. That's the second time I've rolled that. Casimir, you're you just ain't investing. Not this session. You can't invest, man. Hey, I did a thirty-four. The other oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's <laughs> the other one was twice. the one. <laughs> this has been twice. It's just straight ones and everything. Um, Jesus, Bulkhead, you have advantage. I have boundless creativity, so I have epic advantage on all intelligence, <sighs> charisma, and I think it's. And wisdom ability checks. Is an epic advantage also like three d twenties, or is that yeah, only if you take that feat? I don't know if Joey's doing epic disadvantage, epic advantage on us just no, yet. No, I think the I th uh, from what I read, the way it works is it's the way epic advantage works is it just cannot be it cannot be affected by normal disadvantage. Yeah. So like epic advantage completely ignores normal disadvantage mm. so like if i have normal dis if, I, if someone give me normal disadvantage since i have epic advantage i just have advantage yeah which is a much I, more even keel thing that's yeah, very rolling three d20s yeah it's not I three think, yeah. it's, I we're not giving like, elven art we're not giving elven a accuracy to everybody that would <laughs> piss no, I me actually, off i think one of the epic feats is actually if you have epic advantage on something, you roll 3d20s rather than two. Yeah, but if you're one of those dickheads, just know, like, I have a voodoo doll that looks like you. Okay? Joke's on you. You don't know what I look like. You're one to bet. I do. You're subscribed to my Patreon, buddy. Yeah, but he's, I don't have my... I don't have <laughs> me. Wait, I, I your have... real name is not Dick Buckus? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be dead. Yeah, Dick Buckus is dead. <laughs> In the Tuesday game, that's the name of the two cops, Dick and then Buckus. Nice. <sighs> it's great. Anyways. One of one of many great names that have come out of the Chicago Bears. That Mongo McMichaels. Oh, I thought that was the Simpsons. Anyways. <laughs> So, as you all are looking out over this environment, it's it's very strange to look at this ever-changing and molding city. It's, it's even more disturbing than if you were to cut a living body in half and keep the other half pulsating and moving and trying to track after the blood. It just seems to always meld and shape and change as it is moving. The inside of the city, just this perpetual motion of chaos bulkhead however luckily your artificial mind can function and figure out things like this as you are looking at it you notice that the cathedral is missing it's not in the city anymore And that location that Vendir was describing to you seems to now be outside of the city, as if it's a more fixed location. Okay, I'll start heading towards that fixed location. Okay. As you were traveling, maneuvering back, slowly getting closer and closer and closer. You see before you this seemingly very simple looking shack in the middle of the environment. 
the outside of the shack seems to have a star on one side and a crescent moon on the other. As you get closer, flying down towards it, Vindir, you sense a terrifying amount of magic rippling off of it. But the magic is different. It's not abyssal in nature. It's something else altogether. A foreign magic to you that you've never encountered directly before. I would like to use the monocle to study it. Okay. To look at it, I should say. Looking at it, there seems to be a flood of whatever type of magic it is that is pulsating and shooting out from it and enveloping into the environment, kind of pushing outwards and just stretching across it, changing slowly. Is it sort of like a column above the shack, or is it like a dome around the shack? Um, it's like a dome around the shack, but pushing out from it. Roll me an arcana check. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Whatever magic is inside of it seems to be flooding out from that location. Not protecting the location, but the Eldritch energies don't seem capable of influencing it. I'm going to try to get... I'm going to, I'm going to try to fly the ship into the the dome. Okay. The dome seems a little small for the ship to fit into it. Oh, okay. Then I'll stop, like, near it, and I personally will go down to investigate it more closely. Okay. That tiny hut... I'm going to look at the spell going on. Roll me an arcana check. <laughs> Someone cast a summoning spell in the abyss. A 33. Why'd I roll with disadvantage? That's not tiny hut. That's tiny shack. <laughs> Natural 20. Yeah. Yeah, it's not protective in its nature. It's more just a dome of raw magic that's seated on top of it. Kazmir, you think you punch through the magic? One might find out. Why do Crack I even fucking door. speak? <laughs> <laughs> Bulkhead is going into the dome. To, okay. To you walk out. through the dome very easily. And you are the only one who can see it with the monocle. It is not protective in nature. Yeah. <laughs> you simply walk in. No, I just uh, wanted to see if we can punch it. You can certainly punch air. Uh, does it feel noticeably different from the surrounding abyss? <sighs> Roll me a, uh, a perception check. creativity 27 mm. so it does feel completely it feels like not that you've gone to a different location but like this spot has been unimpeded by the abyss I'm going to pull out the sending stone and try and contact Melion again Okay. Uh, roll me another D100. That is not one of the numbers. Still nothing. Okay, I'll look, I'll look inside the shack. You go over to the shack. Do, first, does it look like the shack that we were running towards in Morian 
that one of the Toku were channeling into one of the artifacts? No, 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 no. It doesn't look like that. This is much more simplistic than that was. Okay. I'll go. I'm going to go inside. Okay. So. You go over to the door. You open it up. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. As you open up the door, everybody else sees this bright, shining light that occurs, and Bulkhead seemingly disappears from sight. As soon as you step through, you, you look inside of this very large dome-shaped chamber that has cogs all around you, shifting, molding, and moving in different directions. And in the center of this room is this blue semi-translucent sphere that has this strange writing on the outside of it that reminds you of a school of magic that isn't widely recognized um, from the ley lines. So you're not that terribly familiar with it. But as you start looking around and examining everything, the only creature inside of this location seems to be a bipedal-looking fox folk with glasses on the bridge of their long nose and um, these robes that have some type of holy symbol on the back of it. Roll a religion check, if you would like. Nineteen. Uh, because of your affiliation with the ley lines, this is one of the only gods that is not actively rooted against in the ley lines. Uh, Jonas, the god of time and also somewhat mischief. This is literally Jonas? No, no, that's the symbol on the cloak. That's the symbol? Yes. Okay. You're a cleric of Janus? What are you... What is this place? The fox looks around very carefully, blinks their eyes, and then you're outside of the hut. Everyone else as you are getting ready to head over and go, what the fuck just happened to Bulkhead? He just appears in front of you all. Welcome back. What just happened to Bulkhead again? It was a... Whatever you did, you teleported. So that's our answer to get out of here. I thought you just went invisible. No. Wait, were you invisible? I, I don't think so. So I went in, and then there was this weird dome-shaped space with cogs and a fox person... That had a holy symbol of Jonas. And I talked to him, and then he immediately, I'm assuming, made me leave. Jonas loves us. Let's let's go down there. Let's go see him. Uh, I, I don't think that statement is necessarily true, but <laughs> Liara he's, loves Jonas. He's helped us and us. He's helped us helped us a lot. I'm going to try opening the door again. <laughs> you open the door. You step inside, flash of glowing light, and then it looks like you're stepping out towards your allies once again. Hmm. It would appear that I am not allowed in anymore. Maybe we should try someone else. Who wants to go? I'll go. Well, oh, maybe good luck. Yeah. Rock, paper, paper scissors. You're better at this. I'll go in. But maybe a holy man will be a little better than a robot. I'm a holy person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yourself, right? because of your insane passive, uh, Vendir, as you open the door, you see the flash of light before you. Um, you're not teleporting. You actually step inside of this hut. It's just the inside of this shack is so much more vast than the outside that it 
appears to be a completely different, a strange place. And you see the fox folk kind of like flick a finger in your direction. You almost don't even see it as you notice everything stops and it moves with such an incredible speed. It goes over to you, turns you around and pushes you back out and closes the door. The fox is stopping time and pushing you out. We're, we're, we need help. What what happened? There's fox people in there. <gasps> I need to go see a fox person. I'm going to jump down. Okay. You enter inside and then you walk back out. What? I can't counterspell? No, you can't see it. It's moving too quickly. He has a passive of 35 and just barely notices. I, I Doesn't the spell like end? You're assuming ended? that this creature is casting a spell. Okay. I got this. Just let me. Uh, before I try to walk in, I, I will activate a, pro a profanity mm -hmm. so that when a creature moves within 30 feet of me, I can use my reaction to make them a wisdom save or they're frightened of me. Try to terrify this thing a little bit. It'll be fine. <laughs> that okay. will work for negotiations. Uh, just an intimidating aura. Essential. Sure. Try to walk in. Okay. You walk in and you walk back out. Wait, I didn't walk this way. What happened? Okay. We. If you don't let us in, I'm going to dispel the magical aura. Okay, do not threaten our only chance of getting out of here. I'm not threatening him. I'm just t stating that this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, you are threatening him. Shut up! He's... <laughs> Bulkhead is just going to knock on the door. You knock. Nothing? N no answer or reply, no. Okay, he's going to open the door and not step in. Okay. You see the bright, shining light. Oh, what food? We are not your enemies. We are looking for help. You feel this strange connection into your mind. The only non-demonic one terrified me. That's what he... That's just him. Please, we are trying to leave. There's no leaving. You're stuck here now. Deal with it. That, that's... Not entirely true. untrue. My daughter has come to this place and left. No, she hasn't. We sent a whole city back. We literally just sent a city that was brought here back to the material plane. Because we stopped Zachariah from doing whatever the hell he was doing. Zachariah is just a child. He's not a child. He's a madman. Yes, but still a child. Children could be madmen as well. Okay. Nuts. Do you know <laughs> a way out of here or not? I'm... I, I, yes. We have a spell jammer. If you can tell us how to get out of here, and if you are stuck here too... We can help you escape. Spell Jamma. The light yes. fades away and you now see the uh, the fox folk like literally on the other side, hundred or so feet away, speaking to your mind and it tilts its head upwards. Do you have a convergence coil? Do I know what that is and do I have it? Uh, roll me a tinker's check utilizing intelligence. Um, a convergence coil is a very incredibly rare uh, object. 
that is capable of being integrated into the system of a spell jammer or anything that requires a broomstone in order to allow the location that it is integrated into to not be affected by the typical flows of time um, as they explore to different realms and locations. No, you do not have one. I do not. Oh. Do you have an extra broomstone? I think we do. Don't we? Don't we have extra broomstones that we're planning on giving to... to yeah, Nogu? we have a lot. In fact, we have that perfect one. We have the perfect broomstone. Unless you put it in the ship. And then a lot of... Imp a couple... Like, I think we managed to get two out of salvaging a bunch of them. Which you used on the ship. I think the perfect one you guys Three. still had. No, no, no. The perfect one you still had, or you used the perfect one on the ship, or you used the two imperfect ones and kept the other one. It's one way or the other. We have one. It, uh, we have a perfect one. The fox begins tiptoeing towards you all on its hind legs with its paws raised very curiously and then it looks at everybody else and extends its mind entering into your minds don't try anything it'll just fail I'm not capable of being killed by mortals at this point, on it. don't at this scare point, me again that was really creepy it was just so the key doesn't go to push me out why do you think I pushed you out? I would have pushed you out. You're the only one here who doesn't have demonic influences on them. I didn't know that's what you were doing. I could just send you back. Put up a sign. What? Put up a sign that says non-demons allowed? It's the abyss. Yes. Non-demons are allowed. We're well, also not demons. Yeah, we're not demons. We are... No, all of you are exposed to the abyssal energies here. Except for him. He's a exposed to eldritch energies. Well, well people. Exposed well, or ate, regardless. Uh, if you, I mean, if you're willing to come with us, I can show you the broomstone we have on the ship. He tiptoes out, closing the door with all of you outside and just flicks a single finger and you see this like blue shell envelops the entirety of it. He'll reach out a hand and like I will I will fly both of us I will fly us up there. He looks at your hand, blinks and he's just standing on the bow of the ship. Alright, that works and he's gonna use his boots and start flying up. Wait, that was that's not supposed to be possible down here. I can't do it. I'm not questioning it. I'm questioning it, because it's quite annoying to be able to not do it. What? Yeah. What am I doing? Well, it you, can't be teleportation. So I can't blink. He has to be doing a workaround, or maybe he's doing something that we can't... Maybe it's an illusion. I'm going to poke at the area that he was at. Your hand no. moves through it. But roll me an investigation. I mean, I was going to say intelligence at this point. Like... <laughs> Investigation, yeah. 19. Okay. You move your hand through, and there's something tingly there when your hand passes through and pulls back. What? I'm gonna, I need that monocle right now. He'll toss it down to you. Okay, well, Ver we'll look at it. Very strange temporal magic is there. Chronomancy. Oh, he did a time thing. He's slowing down time. You can't see him. So he jumps onto the top of the ship, looks at all of the demons, or all of the people that aren't demons, waves his hand over them with these blue shells that just appear over each of them. Where is it? Um, he'll um, once Bulkhead gets up there, he's going to show them to show him to the broomstone. Okay, and don't worry about the non-demons. It they'll just be like that for a second. He goes okay. over with you and looks at the large broomstone starting to investigate around us. Oh. 
Oh, yes. Oh, I could use one of these. For what? Oh, it's a lot of things, actually. If you get us and all our people, it's funny you say that because you have those. Oh, wait, am I not in the scene? No, you're, you, we'll say you're like on the ship as it's investigating. You say that. So, yes. Jonas gave us that broomstone. Weirdly enough. Don't think we're supposed to say those things. Well, I mean, it's kind of peculiar that we run into a servant of Jonas and he just so happened to need a broomstone and Jonas gives us one, right? That asshole? I guess. Yeah, I don't think we're supposed to talk about his things that he was doing. I'm pretty sure he said it to us last time that he wasn't happy about us saying that. Well, I mean, we're in the abyss. None of them can hear us. Well, I can hear you. He can teleport and we're not supposed to be able to do that. Oh, no, he's not teleporting. He's stopping time. Which, That's a can you simplification? Re reverse the flow of time? Yes. How far? So, you asked if I can reverse the flow of time, and you asked how far. That's a um, very difficult way of looking at it. Um, realistically, I can alter for myself a decade? For you, an hour? Shit. If I could do five, that would have been perfect. Hmm. Not for you. Can... Do I know how, like, would I know how to make a convergence core? Oh, ooh, that's a big ask. What was your tinker check? 34? Yeah. Okay. Flash. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm out of flash genius. And, and it's, it's a little much, late. Too late. One, but, um, so you would need an hourglass of ascension from a place where time is moves the fastest uh that would be the heavens by comparison of everywhere else um then you would need a drop of essence of eternity uh probably ten thousand gp worth of adamantium uh and you would need around fifteen thousand gp worth of uh various gemstones but you, in theory, you know how to make one. You conceptualized it and fantasized about it before you became a captain. Is there anything that can be done with this broomstone that can get us out of here? Uh, oh, um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, if I told you that, you wouldn't be willing to trade it to me, so... What if I offered to you the opportunity to earn a faster way out for it? Does it save every one of these people? That would be up to you. So, you, yeah, we have every intention of saving, of saving them, so I would assume that means yes. Very well. What I'm, does opportunity mean? Uh, opportunity means um, given a chance to take action in order to achieve one's desired goal or result. No, oh, thank you. I just had what, a crazy what idea. would you want? What do you want this broomstone for? You give me the broomstone, and I will allow you to. Utilize my nexus down there in order to descend further into the abyss, and I will instruct you on specific layers, um, objects or creatures I need you to gather or kill, and in doing so, I will allow you to continue to use my nexus until you reach low enough in the abyss that there is a way out. How low are we talking? Like, all the way to Exium, or, like, a couple floors up? 
you will be within a short amount of time of Axiom. I don't like this idea, guys. Within this... weeks. No, I don't like this idea at all. This is probably our best chance. How did you get out of here? How did Desmond get out? I don't think he used the time traveling fox. Hey, I was just going to. You tell know him. Desmond? Yes, and also oh. here's a better plan. We give you the stone. You go back because you can go back a decade, like you said. Go back and tell us, us right here, before we kill that guy, to have them take the ship back to the city. You guys pointing at all of them. Take this ship back. I don't to the think city, that's how it works. And you tell us to kill ourselves before we kill Zachariah, and everyone escapes. You just give it, do that, and we'll give you the broomstick. I can't. I said I can move myself back a decade. That's what I'm saying. You go back in time and tell us. That's not how that works. I think Why that's not? what they call a paradox. I mean, it. Would when work. I move back, I. I watch when when you pull back time, actions have already been predetermined. Um, well, not predetermined, but determined as soon as something has taken place. It just it it doesn't really work. It's very difficult to explain. Um, I would be observing without influencing. It's just like Desmond, it's basically a divination wizard. Okay. Um. I am no wizard. I am Thelodon, the timekeeper of the abyss. Oh, hold on. It's nice to meet you. How do you know Desmond? And how did Desmond escape? Because I know Desmond's that Desmond's an asshole. Yeah, you're telling us he didn't give a shit about any of the people we were trying to save. Well, that doesn't sound like him. Well, that was him because he, I think Ur here tried to save like 300 plus people and he's like, what are they going to do? Punch something? They can't do magic. Look, it doesn't matter. Um, well, he is useless without his magics. It's a lot of people. I knew him um, before I became the timekeeper. Um, back when he was originally crafted and born. Again. He was kind of an so. asshole to everybody because he was upset that, well, the gods had expectations for him and he thought that he could do a better job changing and altering everything without them. Um, turns out he is a colossal failure at many various different things, but it's very strange. You, you say he isn't... He wasn't wanting to help people, but... All he ever tried or aspired to do was help people. In despite trying to be turned into someone he was not. But it... Only concern was not dying down here. How did he escape? Well, by the sounds of it, your city went back and he was in it. No, I mean the first time. Because oh. I know he didn't go down to other layers of the abyss and kill things. It's not his style or what he does. Do you have something to give me? That broomstone. Even trade, I'll tell you. No, that's oh. not what we're trading. That's not even trade. Well, well then what else? Guide us there and help us get there in a fast manner, unlike the other method. Because we understand that time goes faster the farther we go down. And if I go towards must... Exium, we're going to come out years later. Well, that depends how quickly you all move as you are traversing. If you said uh... weeks, it will be years. Oh, you know everything already. Okay. No, I'm, sa I'm saying that that's just an observation from what we understand. Now, what I'm asking is how did Desmond get out? And if you guide us to this answer and help us in a timely fashion, it's all yours. Do you guys agree with me? I'm going to look at the rest of the group. Yeah. What's a timekeeper? Like a guy with watches, I think. I am responsible. <laughs> you know, I like you. It must be the demonic influence on them. It. I like you. A timekeeper is one who ensures that 
the flow of time adjusts how it is meant to or how they see fit on any of the given layers of the abyss or, uh, well, for people who have easier jobs being timekeepers, their native realms. Um, I had a cousin who worked on Desmond's original realm, um, but now I think Jonas just handles all of them and he left me down here to deal with all of these by myself like an asshole. That is quite a bit of work. It is. But does that mean that if if you were to offer us this help and you were to go and do these things for you, would you be able to restrain our time so that it would be the same as uh, as if it what? was doing it on our world? Why don't you ask her? Like? I'm not the timekeeper. Oh, but You're you had every it. other answer. Well, I don't know your magic, because apparently you can watch time, but, but you can't change things. But you already so. knew everything else. I don't know. I knew the god, another god of time that could actually go back and change things. I am not the god of time. I am a time keeper. Very different. So, would you maybe say you don't know everything? I don't know any everything. I've never claimed to, okay. but I use the. Information. He'll walk over and place his little paw on your shoulder. I would suggest that you move into most situations with that knowledge before speaking. Okay, what, what, are you able to do that? You still have an answer to this question. Now I will. Yes, I am the keeper of time here. And if I send you or guide you, because I'm not allowed to specifically send you uh, to different layers, I control how their time will alter and change while you are there. However, giving me the broomstone... I will open up the passage for all of you. While you are descending, going deeper, if you can retrieve me two of my desired trinkets I want, or slay two of my vexing targets, then I will assist you in knowing how to get further and deeper, and allow you to know where the exit resides. But I feel like I have a very well, what's what's the terminology? Um, desired feature, and all of you are desperate, so I wish to take advantage of that. So, uh, quick clarifying question. Yes. Will, are you only able to affect how the time within the abyss affects us, or are you able to alter it such that time does not pass as fast within these layers, such that years do not pass outside? If I desired it, I could make temporarily not a very long amount of I can't let it do it for a long period of time because that would well start collapsing layers into one another and that's very bad um, control specific layers to not be as quick as they otherwise would be but be closer to well what it is right here on this one okay so if we were to do this years when it pass it would just be essentially as if a day or two or however many, however long it actually felt that we were here, that would be the same amount of time. Within a month. Outside. Within a month. Okay. Then you are going to the fine. end, and it's very difficult to maintain. That's fair. But that is also quite a difficult task that you're offering us. Yes. Um, and probably quite a difficult one. Especially if that brimstone is definitely a way out. It's just that we don't know it yet. Because you did kind of reveal that a little bit as you were talking. Of course. But in the amount of, well, time it would take you to install it into your vessel and attempt to traverse out and 
leave through the abyss and enter into the hells ultimately would be a vast, vastly longer amount of time than doing what I'm asking. Hmm. <laughs> well, unless Neither you... Neither what Des did, guys. What did you say? Neither of these are what Desmond did. He didn't travel up through the hells. I'm almost positive of that. And he didn't go but deeper into the abyss. He found... Like... I know, but he found a way out. Remember, there's always another option. So right. don't Another... take this... I'm sorry, keep going. Don't take this guy's thing as the only the only two choices. I'm not believing it's the only choice, but I'm hearing him out. And He's... seeing what parts can be negotiated upon. The first offer doesn't always need to be the final one. Is your nexus technically part of the abyss? Can I? T can we contact people outside of the abyss from your nexus? Um. No. I'm stuck down here as well as anybody else is. Do you know? How to contact someone from out from someone who is not in the abyss from inside the abyss? I do, but I will not. Can you tell us how? I don't want to. Why? If you speak magically loud enough to be heard outside of the abyss, it could be loud enough to awaken the entity at the bottom of the abyss and draw its attention that it is not it is not making progress which could make it more insatiable in need of destruction and it would mean that there would have to be a lot more within the abyss itself to do that it's a very dangerous thing to try to do um of course, alternatively, um, if you had an individual who was um, flooded with the magic of the abyss um, and attuned to that energy of that creature, they possibly could as well. What would you mean that we can maybe... So if someone has quite a bit of influence of the abyss, we can talk to them without problem? Only if they're affiliated with that creature, but if they're affiliated with that creature, you don't... You're the one at the bottom. Yes. That they is... aren't affiliated with that creature. What? They are not affiliated with that creature. Oh, okay. They are not, but we know someone else who is. Wait, who are you saying is not? Melion. Oh, I'm yeah, trying to yeah, find yeah. a way to oh, contact you're Melion. You're still focused on Melion, gotcha. But... We know Lucian, and we know Desmond. But they are also not affiliated with Exium. Is not being affiliated with Exium a good thing or a bad thing in this scenario? If you're affiliated with them, you can defy some of the laws that the Abyss has instilled upon it by the Pantheon, since... The pantheon that created these laws is weaker than that entity. But at the yeah. same time, you should not trust people affiliated with him. It. That is, that is very true. They seek okay, so utter destruction. And it's bad. That, ex that explains how Zachariah was able to contact people on Zodiac. Because they are all affiliated it with is, him, and he is affiliated with Exium, so he was able to contact them. If it is him. As, do you know what else has been happening on this layer recently? What'd you just ask him? Uh, do you know what else has been happening on this layer recently? Oh, this one has been quite active. Um, there's somebody the... from the 100th layer who came down here, um, they actually seemed to adapt to the environment incredibly quickly. Um, they conversed with a woman who's 
not abyssal in nature, which was very strange, and afterwards was controlling many of the demons. Well, as much as you could control a demon. Um, Does she have blonde hair? I think she was blonde. I'm not quite sure. Did you get was a name Salada? Uh, I didn't speak with them. Uh, That's fair enough. I tend to <laughs> stay away from those types of people um anybody who has demonic influence that's why i was well moving you outside of the door downstairs but i believe the choice is your guys's um you can ignore all of my offers and try to find a different alternative uh best of luck or you could try to use this beautiful broomstone to empower your vessel and escape in a timely manner. Uh, again, best of luck. Um, or you can make your deal with me where, well, you will be helping me to achieve one of my lifelong goals um, while you get to escape faster than otherwise would be possible. Can we ask just on a couple of things before? You, you said may. the woman, was she able to control the demons down here as well? Oh, no, 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 no. She stayed rightfully away from all of them other than him. Other than the Toku, or the one from the Hundred there, you said. Zechariah, yeah, yeah, that one. Yes, so he's from the Hundred there, so quite a distance away. Mm. Oh, do you know how long it takes to move between layers? For someone like Zachariah. For someone like him? I mean, the moment you regrow and find your own sentience again, if he can break out of his spiral of perpetual seeking, um, someone like him would even be able to control the, the great ones of the ocean's divides. So he would be able to probably traverse downwards fairly quickly. Uh, would you like time translated for you? If you could, please. Okay. Uh, 16 hours? Interesting. And you said the sea. Is that the way that you're able to move between? Well, some can. If you can withstand the old ones that live within the divides. Interesting. Um, what was the goal that you said? You said it was a lifelong goal. I'm just curious of what that actually is. What, for me? Yes, yourself. Oh. If we were to give you this. Well, if I had that broomstone, uh, I would have one of the greater power sources um, in the universe um, in order to try to create a more powerful control over my shack down there, the Sanctum. Um, and then if you gathered the other things for me, I would be able to create something magnificent to keep myself more appropriately entertained while I'm down here. Believe it or not, but Eons is quite tiresome. I'm on dead. I can understand. Well, this might be... You have lived longer our... than most stars have burned? No, not yet. He didn't really answer the question, Casimir. He just said something beautiful. Yes, I understand. I'm making something beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah, private. That's not... <laughs> okay, cool. We'll just grab all the materials for this private project um thank you that sounds great no that was me being sarcastic i, I don't learning. like her look most people don't i can tell why this is very likely our best chance to get out of here i think we should take this hey guys everybody we meet is gonna say they're our best chance That's yes right. they're an <laughs> option here but from listening to him, we've already gathered that there are other options. In fact, I think Zachariah is our easiest option. Let him come back at us. 
we beat the crap out of him once. What, is he going to send the Tarask at us? We'll just beat him up again. Well, Hell, what, we beat that what, up before he shows up. What purpose will that serve, though? That won't get I, us any closer to escaping. I have a spell that I don't like spells like this, but I have a spell that I can use on him that will... We can't kill him. We're going to have to knock him out. But if we hit him with this spell, he's essentially going to be something I can control in a way. And I can get him to send us back like he sent Stellar. No, he doesn't send Stellar. Stellar is able to move through the planes. We that know. That's a power that she got from Exil. We already found that out before that she was able to teleport to places that she shouldn't be able to. Do you not think Zachariah would have the same ability to teleport us out? I mean, he teleported no, the city she, in. She was his chosen. And she was here when the wounds were being placed. I don't know if Zachariah did that or she did that. Because why else was she here? Who went in the building first? And I'm going to look over at Vindir. Vindir! Did he have, like, an artifact or something he was concentrating on? Um, let me think. History check. I... Cough, he did. I remember Joey mentioning it. <laughs> well, we're gonna go ahead and use advantage. It's my game advantage. It's again end of the night. Yeah, and I'm is. gonna go ahead and cut. Yeah. Okay, cool. Have you... Have... Mix of both of them hey! There's your good rolls. So, inside of the center, you recall that he was focusing and channeling over this strange green table and cauldron with these very strange objects floating around inside of it. Okay. Before coming over oh. to you and, well... Killing me? Um, yeah, he was screwing around with some, uh, with a cauldron. We kill him, it disappears with him, but if we knock him out, we can use what he has. And if I need to, I can oh. force him to do something or put him in a very, I can put him in a state that he'll never return to the abyss or anywhere ever again. And well, I don't think he can leave the abyss. Well, I mean, he can. Whatever life he has now will be basically done. Like, he, there's no coming back from this spell. But, yeah. I mean, maybe, but we can also just leave. And we haven't actually this checked might the be house the, to see if things are there. This might There's be not... an alternative to us giving away our broomstone or using it for something. We just wait for him to come back and have him send us back instead. Yes, That's, but we also need to kite the Tarrasque. Uh, that's also assuming that he can actually send us back. I mean, he was concentrating on that spell for the city. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to... You, in, If he can't, those materials he's... are the thing that we need to get back. And between he's... you and me, Bulkhead, I think we can figure it out. He's just a pawn, though. Like, he is not the end all and be all of this. He is a being a pawn of Solana. We know that she is like his champion, his prodigy, whatever you want to call it. He's just a pawn. This whole t everything with the talking about it was just a pawn. This brimstone was made one. before the divide, right? This is the first one, as my understanding goes. Um, wow. Okay. And they just go back to examining the brimstone. Yeah, now I really don't want to give up the broom stuff. I don't either. Um, <laughs> look, if there were material components that we were trying to get the relics and reconstruct them, that was the plan beforehand. If their material components were are with him, we could use them. And more of, or it's a shot where we don't have to rely on giving away our assets or being pawns to make something quote unquote beautiful. We. presents less risk factor and less change overall in the abyss and i don't want to create a change in the abyss that we don't know the repercussions of like making whatever he needs 
Because if I don't know what I'm making, we could, for all I know, be making a portal out for him as well. And oh, now there's I just a way leave. out of the abyss. I have too many responsibilities. Yeah, so did, so did a lot of other people, I'm sure, that got sent here. <laughs> okay, so how about this? What is it that you are making? Do I have to tell you? It would possibly make it more likely for us to do business with you. Roll me persuasion, Bulkhead. Can I give him advantage because I have been helping with this? Dirty uh, time. Like being the one talking to him. Sure. I was asking about it. 20. He'll kind of usher for you to follow him to whisper to you. He will. And he'll look at everybody else and seemingly doesn't tell him anything. Uh, however, Bulkhead, he stopped everybody else from moving, whispered what it is to you, and then kept going. Uh, let me whisper to you. Black Jack and Guys, if he's not comfortable telling everybody what it is, it's probably not good. Well, he's whispering it to him right now. Yeah, but why can't you just say it in the open? It'd be embarrassing. Could be like opening his diary. Bullcat, I whispered to you. Yeah. I'll take a little peek at my book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your yeah it would have been active during it. All right, uh, Casimir it says a coffee shop. Okay. Good <laughs> cool. I. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Can I tell them? I, I don't want that one looks at Liara. No. I understand your apprehension. But again, if we are forthright, with this information, we are more likely to want to assist you, because assisting you appears to be our most likely way of escaping. Oh. Fine, but you can't comment on it, and he points at you, Liara. Not a word. You can comment about the deal, but not it. This is my dream. He wants to make a coffee shop. That's I think cute. it's yeah. I like that's extremely benign, and I have no issues with it. Why would a coffee shop? Hey, be... <laughs> that's a yeah. question. I'm not commenting. A comment would be me snorting. Hey, hey um, I'll, I'll I'll ask it. Why the <laughs> fuck does a coffee shop need a broomstone? The broomstone would be the channeling force for me to grow all of the beans of various different places and one of the creatures that you would hunt has many very rare seeds and beans on them and bring it here um, and another one is a um, it's a plains cow that was supposed to be on this layer but it isn't I'd be able to get its milk and with everything else I could just control time just enough to make myself the perfect cup of coffee whenever I want and try every form and iteration of coffee ever and it would keep me entertained yeah come here come here a second we're, we're gonna pretty take sure. one little minute away from this I'm pretty sure I have beans on me should I just give him a coffee beans no yeah. but think about this if we couldn't do this what the, then that means that we can take our reward of the seeds for ourselves and put them in the, the, the laboratory <laughs> I was actually kind of thinking about that cows. too. Then if, we can have the, the, I, I'm missing milk. two cows. Like we could just take like a fucking herd like, of them. He only needs well, one. We, we could steal his entire idea and then just make it a bug ground as well. Like, we what are you naming the there. coffee shop? <laughs> no, too far, too far, too far. We don't trust her. What? No, we're just uh, asking because that's gonna be like the real deal breaker if it's called like 
Abyssal Dreams would probably not be able to help you because I just need. And who the fuck are you gonna sell coffee to? I'm not gonna sell it to anybody. It's gonna be mine. Yeah, he he literally said that he just wants to craft the perfect cup of coffee for every different type of bean. Yeah. For every different type of roast. For every different type of grind, every different type of uh, like like way like every different method of creating coffee. Like he, he is making something that will actual that like actually occupies his time that isn't just fucking around in the abyss. I think this oh. is. Again, so I think I think this is incredibly benign. Isn't something that will risk anything outside of the abyss. It is also clear to me that he has no intentions of leaving because he has a task to do here. I'm yeah. for it. What I'm, I'm saying is that it's on a coffee shop then. We're just renovating its kitchen. No, he huh. he's making his own coffee shop. Yeah, it's just not open to the public. Could visit. No, could no. slip. He's could, renovating could his could kitchen. I, after it's built, could I get a coffee? Cup? I really don't want to be judged on all of this, guys. It's just, it's. I'm not trying oh, to do. No I, I want. He's judging me now, and now he points over at uh, Vindir. Well, I'm, for he, somebody that's so that. smart, you're really not naming it properly. It, it is. It, stop. Yeah. Stop nitpicking his dream. Um, he wants to make a lot of coffee. Look, look, look. He can Where make do you... No, 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 yeah, but you're a hunk of metal. Like, throw uh, some, like, salt water at you, and you're, like, your kryptonite. You're young to me still. Okay, so let's I can just help him get the coffee. You know what? Regardless, the point is, nitpicking every aspect of what he wants to do is actively detrimental to us getting out of here. For someone so wise, you are extremely short-sighted. Oh yeah. This is insanity. I just don't know why he just can't help us out. He is offering it to us. No, just, I mean, he has just... told us what he wants to do. I and you are think... still nitpicking every inane aspect for some ungodly reason. Because that's what I do. Foresight. Think before you speak. I think Vindir's trying to say it's a little crazy. And this isn't an attack at you looking at Faldor. This is more like it just seems way out of the blue and out of left field. Especially for the things that you need. I understand Imagine... that he's using it for time dilation in a hobby. But it's just a very odd request. Well, if not I everything asking, has to be world-endingly important. I mean, I just want to do something. It does Listen, so. I... My isolation was on a very much smaller scale than his. He has been here for, as he said, eons. When you are alone... You want something... You want to do something that matters to you. I can... I identify that on a deep and personal level. I, come to I had 150 years where I had no one yeah, that uh, cared okay. about me. Look, I don't I have a problem with... I don't have a problem with him trying to find something to do but we literally have a ship full of people that we didn't know 24 hours ago and we didn't ask them to pay us 
to help them. But yeah, it's it's just like That's where are your point. priorities? My priority is protecting the abyss and, and not protecting the, the time stream. You're wrong. No, not the and the priorities suck. Not really, because what he, he would be amended, he would be going against that principle to aid us so that it would not be taking as multiple years as it once would. He is bending what abilities he has. To That's because we're only taking that. his option. Like I said, if we wait for Zachariah, the wait for Zachariah option is going to take us multiple years. I think this but, is a good option, and I think we take it. I don't think it's a bad option. I think the price he's asking and what he's doing it for is the wrong reasons. And yes, we should help him. It's just how this has come about is a total fucking mess. Like, legitimately, when we're screaming, hey, we need help, and you're just saying, oh, well, fuck them. It's the abyss. <laughs> Everybody believes shit. they need help. Everybody that's down here that can talk, yes, probably needs help. I'm sorry, have you met something that hasn't tried? If I'm getting attacked by something, if you were getting attacked by something and didn't have magic, would you not want me to come help you? Yes. If you screamed for me to help you, and I, I sat would. there and said, well, <laughs> well, I haven't, don't need to help you because I don't feel like it. Yeah. That's Isn't you that do. Imperius Clerics? Then that's a, I understand that. It's not something you should understand. That's something that's wrong. And that's what you're not understanding. And for somebody that's lived eons, that seems to be a lack of wisdom on that part. Now, I believe that this person can help us and we can go through them and do the job. I also believe this person's priorities are so messed up that helping this person, yes, doesn't change anything, but I, I just kind of don't want to help them off the principle that it's not, they're not doing it for any other reason than themselves. And I'm sick of helping people yes. like that. I'm so sick of helping people like that. In fact, once we get out of here, I'm not doing this fate stuff anymore, guys. If it's fate, I'm not dealing with it. It's going to happen. Because in all reality, I'm pretty sure we sped up this event from occurring because of all the action we took. Just saying, that blade, that gauntlet looks at uh, Bulkhead. That was part of the prophecy. If we didn't come here with that gauntlet, like, it was... It was said that that was going to be down here. And we actively got it and brought it here. We actively pushed these forward by trying to stop them. I'm not dealing with these things anymore. If we're going to put it to a vote, I'm voting that we just take Zachariah and get out of here. I don't... I think... I don't want to deal with these problems. I'm for helping... Oh, what was his name again? Thalador? Thalador Thaladon. Yeah. Thaladon. Thaladon. I'm yeah. probably Thaladon because this is an actual concrete way out. The assumption that we can use Zachariah to get out is based on so many different layers of assumptions where this is actually concrete. Look, I'll help him, but I'm not giving him the burn stone. Well, that th those two are mutually exclusive. We are helping him. We have to give him the broomstone. So we got to go on a fucking treasure hunt and give him a gift? Yeah. It's yeah, that part like of the much. deal. It's a little much. Oh, wow. Well, there is a could... price to escape this place? That's crazy. You could just give me the broomstone and I'll open up the passage and you can find your own way. No, we need your assistance. You are being very kind in what you're offering. You are taking you are taking advantage of this a little bit, and we do yes. recognize that, but that's okay. And you've admitted to such, and that is fine. Opportunities like this only come once every couple of eons. Yes, uh, God so we understand that you're taking a little somebody. bit of advantage. It's just okay. about how can we manage that. Don't message. start acting holier than that when, we, when all of us have been doing nonsensical, self-serving shit this entire time. Um... What? Self-serving things I do are usually the benefit of everyone. No, that's not how self-serving works. Self-serving things only help you. If I do something that helps me but also helps the community, am I evil? Because I, my desire was to help myself more than that community? 
No. In because people like me truly about beneficial. Good and evil? It's not a good and evil thing, but what I'm saying is... You're the one that brought up evil. Why are we even discussing this? It's a mutual beneficial thing. Well, the reason I'm discussing it is because you brought up self-serving action. If your self-serving action also helps others, it then in itself isn't self-serving. Yes, you benefited from it, but you're, you're painting it in a light that's wrong, is what I'm trying to get at. Whereas, like I said, this person has the opportunity to do the right thing, looking at all the refugees and everyone on this boat. And it's still just the self-serving thing with, hey, guess what? I'm taking advantage of it. I'm taking your shit. And you guys are going on a treasure hunt for us, like Vindir said. And then maybe you guys can leave. So sorry that I'm apprehensive of the idea of let's follow the I was just to say it's shameful opportunist. Is that not what we've what like we've been doing a lot is being shameful opportunists? But aren't we trying to like stop Exium from destroying everything so we're not really being shameless? Yeah, when you have a higher arcing goal, I don't think the higher arcing goal of a coffee shop outweighs saving people's lives. But the coffee shop... Okay, by your own logic, his self-serving dream will be directly helping other people. If we, so is, it, is that such... Is that now we're, not self-serving? Because we're doing all the legwork. Okay, like, and? It's, it, we're doing... It's not I helping anyone. Buy... We're doing all the work. If I, <laughs> it is no longer self-serving doing... because it is now helping people. By your logic, that is correct. And we're not my doing logic, all the work. I, I think you're because missing. It's... I'm it's not. Literally, literally said. You literally said if actions are self-serving, but they also help other people, it is no longer self-serving. That is what you said, and this is what is occurring right now. Either. I am right, or your logic is inherently flawed and you can't or see Or maybe that it's not yet. black and white. Maybe if the self-serving thing isn't, oh, well, it's so self-serving to one person and then so minorly helpful to another. And by minorly point. helpful, please understand, since I have to define each thing, that minorly helpful means that he is using our labor, everything we do, to essentially say, hey, you did all the work, so I'm just going to put this together real quick and tell you the exit strategy. Would you like that's to cup of coffee on. at the end? No. I'd like you to do the right thing and just help all the people that need to be saved. Do you want me to do the right thing? Yes. No. We don't. Because to him, just... the right thing is no. not helping us at all. Exactly. We then are the here. Right thing Letting us be... out is inherently bad because we have been corrupted. And it gives a chance for not just us to lead, but other things. And he is helping. Lead. It's not as though he's not doing anything at all. He is keeping us so that it would be... He is manipulating time so that we would only be going at the same space as our world. So whereas every other option wouldn't be. He's then giving us the correct location and his aid for us to successfully do that. He is helping minimum. in multiple parts. It's okay, what you're saying is it's, it's not the bare enough. Minimum. He's still helping us. It's more than anything else that we have. And he's doing quite a bit to assist us. Well, we can go get the coffee shop. If I ever come back, out of character, I'm totally coffee. fine with this, guys, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 also, I also wanted to say this because we were getting a little heated. That was in character. I'm not actually yeah. mad at anybody. Yeah. We're all adults. Uh, but uh, in character, if I ever come back to this goddamn place and I see that fucking coffee shop, I'm burning it to the ground. No, yeah, we are the same it sentiment to... as Vindir on this one. supposed to be a cleric. Wow. Yeah. You guys really do understand evil. Well, I mean, understand evil. Could I get a coffee when we do come back? Yes. That would be quite interesting to try. There's Thank actually you. a blood bean. Ooh, that would be very interesting. I'm very excited to try that one. I can't ingest it, but I can drink it. And they reach their hand out towards the broomstone. It just disappears. Then they jump off the ship. 
I'll follow him. Yeah, follow him. I'm gonna give you some Air Genasi Guano fucking coffee beans and shove them down your throat. Oh, um, oh that's a different brew, yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Will you be able to let a ship inside to go with us? All right, you have two options. Option one, I can, you can leave the ship here. Will you be able to watch over? Yes, but it will remain here because it can't really get into the door and this temporal space cannot change its size. Um, option two, I make the ship age to the point where it becomes nothing, and then we pick up the dust, and when you get to the next location, I revert that, and it turns back to what it is now. Give or take a couple of weeks. Let's just go. We don't need the ship, guys. You'll be leaving it here hold, permanently. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, permanently? Like, we can't yes. bring yeah. it out of the it's abyss? It's physically here. It can't... Yeah. But it takes us a week every layer we bring it down? No, he said he will return it to what it is right now, give or take a week. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I like, it like was... it's its age will be plus or minus a week. Yeah, no, I yeah. thought he meant So like lo law of averages, it'll be about the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. For the intent, like uh... a ship like this would actually take like probably a million years to break down because how much magic is in it. I don't like the prospect of destroying my ship, but don't look. If it's the if it's the only way to bring it with us, then I will have to tolerate it. Uh, oh, yeah, I, the greater good. Wait. I will need to grab a hold of someone and keep them very so that they don't escape. Why? In the process, um. I have a spawn here. Oh. Are they on the ship? They are. Do you think you'd be able to help along yeah. the process until they have their mind? Yeah, they can't move. Oh, thank you. Um, I've given them five seconds. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, so all the people on top of the ship, while we've been talking for the last 25 minutes or so, that has been one second. Oh, so you're like, you can do like this kind of fey magic stuff. No, I'm not Fey. Oh, but it was like I'm fiendish. five seconds can't pass. I'm an Arcana law. I'm. Just, hey, I'm weird just, question. Oh, Do you I have don't any know what rabbits you've been raising? Why? <laughs> Insight. He has. Go oh my it. god. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it's that like the DM knows? <laughs> was it? Was was it that? Was 24. that the? The Ares prophecy? Plus eight. Sixteen. This motherfucker has rabbits. <gasps> How much? What? Give us a rabbit and you have the broomstone. Guys, I'm changing the deal. No. No, Give we you... already made our deal. No, 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 we never shook on it. Never shook We don't need hand. to shake. Everyone We're not Faye. in your pocket so we can't shake. We're not even Fay. <laughs> Too late. We shook hands. No, we didn't. I yeah, didn't we did. It. Didn't see it. No one Doesn't saw Doesn't matter. It. Vendir, you yeah, saw it, but only like the briefest of moments. Yeah, yeah. Well, where's the no, contract? No. Give us, give us, the, give us the, I want, guys, one rabbit each. No, just one, one rabbit. You can make a separate deal with the rabbit. How many rabbits do you need? I mean, I need a lot. Why? It's for something beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it self-serving? Does it help these people? No, it, it helps. Well, then it no, it's unimportant people. unless it helps it, these people. It doesn't just help these people. It helps something very... It helps something that's been hurt for a very long time. I need you to roll a deception right. check. That's not a deception check. That is a fact. Yeah, I know, but he's trying to gleam, like, how deep does that go? Like, is it, oh, that's sad, or, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Liara is sad. Liara thinks it's very sad. Okay. This isn't a persuasion check. This is a deception. Okay, I'll roll deception, but she's being honest. 19, wow. All right. He has a plus 8. H how many... Yeah. Wow. Welcome to my how life. How many rabbits do you need? I'm going to need... <laughs> it's going to sound fucked up, guys. Let's bring up Liara's fucking goal sheet. 
Um, bio. He has rabbits. I can't believe he has rabbits. I know, Just out of curiosity, do you know anything about either a Quill of Destiny or a Veil Craft? Oh, that, that's from Fate that's, itself. I know how to get a Quill. Don't worry. We'll get one soon. I'm going to still ask him. Do you happen to know anything about the other of those? Uh-uh. Okay, thank you. But they're my if rabbits. If we need a bunch, if we need a bunch of rabbits, could you breed them in your time dilation, mumbo <gasps> jumbo, and then give them to us? Yeah, I'm gonna need a lot. Like, what if we all promise to eat some coffee beans and poop them out for you? Well, yes, that, please. Only one of you has a biology that that would matter for, and you already said you would do it, so you're doing it. No, he never shook on it. Hide your hand. I well, shook his actually, hand. It doesn't matter. I, I, I said I was going to do it, but I didn't say I was going to give them to you. Okay, fine. I'll take your shit. I won't shit. I'll find a different Ganassi. This Where? Wet... You, said, you say you only meet people once every few eons. Uh, uh, uh. Only cognizant people. We have the entirety of the abyss. And I don't oh, need I'm to asking... meet them just to stop them. Hey, I'm just asking for some rabbits for some coffee beans. You're doing this for self-serving reasons. I feel like I don't need to. Uh, it can't That's be not self-serving. true. It's I just told you it wasn't. Well, it serves for it's, her. Yeah, yeah, it's not self-serving for myself, though. So mm. I'm not asking you for something for self-serving. Look, I need a lot of rabbits. Like, a lot. How many like, is a lot? I'm going to whisper to Casimir, 100 gallons of rabbit's blood. <laughs> Raised have... by foxes. Hold on. I got to uh, do the math. Can I? How much? Uh, quick question. <laughs> yeah. How many? How much blood is in the average rabbit? Nature check <laughs> and FBI agent. Sorry. Uh, how much blood is in the average rabbit? Okay. It is, um. Hold on. I got it already. Sixty it milliliters. No, it's 60 milliliters per kilogram, and the average rabbit is 4 kilograms of 260 liters. Uh, How mill many milliliters? Two. You said you need gallons? Gallons. Like, gallons. we already oh. need so much rabbit's blood whoa, 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 whoa. So for this two... ritual. Okay, so, um, <laughs> gallons to milliliters. Uh, we need 100 gallons. We need uh, 378,000 milliliters, and it's 240 you milliliters. 1800. You need 1,800 rabbits. He could breed that in like two seconds. I need 1,800 rabbits. Joey, you gave me an impossible task. Uh, actually, like, it's, I it's, did, <laughs> and I put it here. Tec <laughs> bulkhead, bulkhead chimes up. Technically, it would be 1,578 rabbits. There you go. Round it up to 1,600, because I would quite like a drink. <laughs> Actually, no, but it's rabbit. I don't want rabbit. I'm a vegetarian. 1,600 rabbits. When it Throw comes to animals. In. And what do you offer me? Well, everything we just offered. I'm and... doing a lot of different alterations to time which are incredibly dangerous and go against my purpose here i'll give you a favor for my church and coffee beans that i've been you I've guys been know you're freeing char you're actively free why do i, I don't know that why do i technically care? bulkhead doesn't know Duck, technically bulkhead doesn't know this he doesn't know anything about your char shit <laughs> you guys are actively freeing char by doing this i, I want you to know you. out of character yeah That's out of character it sounds fun in character oh no <laughs> Yeah, in character, technically Bulkhead doesn't know anything about your char shit. If he did, he wouldn't. He would probably Whoa. be trying to kill you right now. I'm gonna. Liara. I can Hold offer out. you some spa supplies. That is a very high wait, quality. Wait, guys, guys. Levistus get really liked this. Everybody I've offered them have really liked them, but I only got a few left. I'm gonna pull out the vials of caterpies that I have. <laughs> <laughs> Those this is the, the greatest currency Liara's ever owned. Romeo Persuasion oh. at disadvantage because you have been authentically very judgmental and mean towards him. 
Okay, I'm gonna use game advantage to make this a straight roll. Of course you are. <laughs> the recap advantage. Guidance. Yeah, guidance. You know what? I'm Please. instituting make a super oh. ultra disadvantage. Much R two D four. I mean one D four. One D four. Cool. Thirty. Why would I want those? Oh, oh! I could make an interesting beam with the worms in that soil. I would just have to create a temporal area that they can't chew through, which I could theoretically do. You said no, you they can some... chew through everything, including the abyss. They can't chew which through I'm time. To realize. They can't. Are you chew sure? Th I'm positive. I'm gonna look at it. <laughs> Give what me all we? of them. All, all five. All five. for sixteen hundred rabbits. Yes, and I will condense them in whatever form you would like. You know they glow in the dark when you, like, they bleed? I know what they are. Can I ask what they are? I've always been curious. Yeah, what are they? Like, let's oh. pretend I didn't know. They're eater worms. <laughs> <laughs> They're worms that can eat through anything that is magical or unmagical in nature, though it might be a slow and tedious process. They tunnel directly downwards wherever they want and chew through anything, realistically. They can even eat powerful magics that go all the way up to the fifth or sixth, in rare occasion, levels of spells. But they can't chew through time. Okay, yeah, you can have them. I should really go collect these things in Zodiac. They're probably a danger now that I'm thinking about it. He'll take the five. Wonderful. It's just like sucker. So <laughs> what form would you like the rabbits in? Uh, gallons of blood. You didn't say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Vindir, being the only person with a remotely high enough perception, you see him freeze time, and as he does, moves over to this small chamber where he pulls out one rabbit, two rabbits, and then just keeps pulling out rabbits, and as he's pulling them out, he's slitting their throats, dangling them upside down, and bloodletting them into large troughs. And you, for you, it's only like 15 seconds for him to go through all of this shit. Because it's realistically only one second, but for you, you perceive things so finite and so well that you see him do all of this with a very traumatized look on his face as he's doing it. And then at the end of it, he just barrels up. <clears throat> How many gallons are in a barrel, guys? Uh, a large barrel. A barrel. How many gallons uh, in we could a say like large twenty-five gallon barrel? barrel. Fifty-five gallons is the standard barrel size nowadays. So you need two of them. Yeah, a hundred. So he brings, at the end of it, sitting right next to him. To everybody else, it's just. Within a moment, two large barrels. There they are. Vendir, wow. you saw him go through like a very, like, yeah. he hyperventilated. Uh, he was very traumatized and just like freaked out. Cast that. Oh, I'm over that now. It's been a while. You're an actual saint. Thank you so much. No, I'm much. not. I'm a fiend. Fiends can also do good things sometimes. I'm and okay. she's gonna take the barrels of blood. <laughs> oh my They're God, fucking guys. heavy. You're... <gasps> Shit. <laughs> this what? is insane. Okay, one. She's gonna pull out a checklist to check that off the list. All right, guys. So, you ready to go hunt down the void harbinger? Uh, what about grabbing the cows or the beanstalk monster? Those are closer to the bottom. All right, well, let's... Mm, we could probably... Probably too much to ask for a lot of unrest, wouldn't it? I mean, Zachariah's going to be here in, what, 11 hours? So we could rest. For like, 10. I mean, we don't need 10, we need 8. Can we technically do it in, like, one second? As I look it's at still the, uh... acting, asking more than we need to. Hmm. 
All you right. wouldn't have to know where a bunch of mute people are buried, right? <laughs> Just grabbing all the ingredients. He has here. a plus twenty to Arcana. No. And we're done making deals. I'm gonna check my book. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, that dangerous bitch. Oh, I really <laughs> want this shop. But is it really worth risking the universe? I really want that shop, though. Yeah, fuck him. Wait, what? That's everything he reads in the book. Oh, that reads book. thoughts in proximity. Um, bulkhead... You might want to not look behind you right now. Oh, do we feel it before it shows up? No. He ages the ship oh. and then oh. transmutes yeah. all of the dust into a bag and hands the bag to you. Everything condensed into a 10 pound sack. Is all of the people going to be able to reappear back on the ship once we've... Oh, there was people on that! Yeah! They're all now demonic. I can kill them. <laughs> did they... Did they are they... Are they technically dead? When you undo Technically, this, they're they dust. Let's get have, going. I don't, I don't have the cognitive faculties to, to <laughs> measure the what just occurred. Let's go. When they come back, are they going to be like the well? No, More or less. <laughs> fucked up. Are they going to be corrupted? Yeah. It depends if I go further than the point in which they would have died naturally. One of them was going to die naturally within the first couple of weeks, so he has a small possibility of it, but I wouldn't worry about him because he'd just go back to where his tether was set to. Yeah, but I don't want my vampire to get another one. Oh. Yeah. I think that would be bad. Hmm. Subjective. Not bad if for me. Something that, if they I do mean... something, I will die. Which means... I can't get your beans. And we'd be nice to each other. Oh, please. I looked into how powerful you are while I was massacring hordes and hordes of the bunny rabbits that I've been storing here and raising and treating as if they were my own children for ages. I swear right, those it's, it's the gods. so much. It's the gods <laughs> and the demon lords, uh, devil lords, whatever you want to call them, that might be trying to kill me if anything happens oh to that then one. you're perfectly safe here yeah but i'm not when i go out eh. well to be fair <laughs> leaving the spawn here is actually probably the best course of action no i would like my spawn i turned them for a reason was that reason self-serving and selfish yes Good to know. I respect I, that. I didn't see anything about all of that conversation. Everything I do is fairly selfish. That's good. Same here. That's what being a fiend's all about. Self-serving. Just some serve no matter what the consequences for anything. Some serve no matter what the consequences for anybody else is. And some serve without, well, a whimsy or care of consequence. You're a fiend? Yes, I'm an Arcana Loth. I don't know what that is. Um, you know how devils are lawful? They follow like no. a law. They follow like specific words. They're passionate about things like that. Well, demons are chaos. They just want destruction of everything, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I know that part, yes. My types of creatures were more in the middle, where we don't really care. I feel that. You're muted. What are you saying, White? Ever like a truly neutral creature? Yes. Grass. And trees. Grass is pretty true. 
I hate druids. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and as you guys go off, this is where we're going to call the session this week. Remember, no session next week because I'll be on vacay. Players, thank you all very much for playing. Viewers, thank you for watching. Hope you had a great time. Bye. <laughs>